Hello homeschoolers, welcome to the land of Kak Yak. My name is Laurel. Today's video is a prep and chat. Uh, I'm working on something. I'm not gonna finish it, but I'm working on it. If you follow me, I have talked about uh, the Bernstein Bears, the big book of science, and how I use it for our kindergarten science curriculum. So I have been working on activities to go along with this. Stuff that like I actually do with the kids, things that you can find around the house, stuff that isn't, you don't have to go out and like buy a bunch of stuff for it. You know, stuff that like real people <laughs> can do on the fly. So yeah, nothing fancy, but just kind of fun making things hands on when you're not that hands on Pinterest mom. <laughs> okay, so I'm just going to be kind of working on this. I'm going to be matching up some of my activities. I'll give you a sneak peek into a few of them. I'm not finished. I'm trying to kind of match it in the, them in the book. I'm kind of moving things around and seeing if there's things I need to edit. So I'm going to be kind of working on this, but what I wanted to talk to you about today is screen time. Just if you haven't looked at this book before, I'll link it below in the description box and it's about that thick. It is, I'm using it with my second child that I've used it with now and it was really popular it was really easy to go through the first time I went through it I just kind of I just you know opened it up and would like read with my son with William I just kind of talk with stuff and I would just kind of try to like come up with stuff to do sometimes and you know it's kind of like hit and miss you know you're just kind of trying to pull something out of thin air and I hated stopping to like try to Google something like in, it just was a way for the homeschool to get off track. Like, oh, mom's on the computer. She's distracted. Now kids are gonna start, you know, goofing off or whatever. I, you lose them sometimes when you're trying to do that. So I was trying to take the time because I am using it with Bo and I had a, I had already had been through it once, I had some ideas of things I could do, but I just decided this week, I was like, I just want to make a plan for everything I'm gonna do or could do with this book that I know myself that I would actually do, <laughs> then I don't have to be like trying to come up with stuff, you know, pull, you know, just pulling it out of thin air as the days, uh, as, they, as it comes up. So that's my goal. It's kind of, I like it. It starts out with a, um, the beginning of the book is talking about the seasons. So it's kind of like slowly warming them up. It starts in, you know, um, winter. And it kind of just goes through the seasons. And it talks about like holidays that fall within certain seasons. Like I think it talks about, you know, New Year's, Valentine's Day, and they get mentioned it's Christmas. I think that's the only, oh, and April Fool's. Um, which, P.S., every single year, my, I forget that it's April Fool's Day and my dad calls me it gets me like almost every year like because I'm 40 years old he gets me every year <laughs> anyways it's like you think I would have like wised up to it by now but anyways nope nope that's gullible old me I guess okay and all right so anyway so it starts out with just talking about the seasons and then it goes into to most of the book is actually this um, nature guide Almost everything small bears and kids need to know about animals, plants, the earth itself. With actual facts about frogs, possums, birds, fish, trees, rocks, ladybugs, and earthquakes. And lots more. And of course, I love there's, you know, little reading sections and it's, you know, rhyming and I love this book. They just did a really good job. Anyway, so just, it's just sticking to the facts. Like I would start out, I'm going to talk, be talking to them about the solar year. Anyway, so screen time as I'm, as I'm sorting this stuff out. Uh, this came up in our RC curriculum Facebook page. People were talking about face to, or screen time. And I was like, I kinda wanna share my thoughts on it. And I was like typing, I was like getting this long thing and I was like, oh, I'm, just gonna, I'm just gonna talk about it. <laughs> it's gonna be easier to do. Because I think whether you're an RC parent or not, screen time is something that a lot of us are, is on our mind. Uh, we didn't have, we had TV as a kid, you know, but we didn't have all the devices and they weren't 
you know, and they weren't as attractive as they are today. These are my thoughts on screen time. And so I consider screen time in the same category as sugar. These are things that are addicting. And I don't, I don't think that's like a disputed fact <laughs> that the, that the screens, that the vibrancy, that the light, that they and the, like sugar, like these things are dopamine hits, right? And people get addicted to them. And I think if you, if you research it a little bit, you'll see the statistics on screen time. To me, the, the bad outweighs the good. And in something I saw in the, what people were talking about on the Facebook group, somebody said that screen time can be a tool for like self-regulating for autistic people or kids. And that's something I know nothing about. <laughs> so I can't, there, there are probably, you know, uh, avenues to this conversation I have no idea about. So I'm just, I'm just, you know, admitting that, you know, so, but just for our family, what I've seen and how I think it applies to my kids is that it's more of a detriment than a positive, um, especially when it's, I don't think, I think everyone here has common sense and they're not like, oh, kids can have unlimited, unsupervised access to all our electronic devices and all the scary stuff that, you know, I don't think anyone's, I give you guys more credit than that. So I'm gonna skip all the totally obvious stuff and just talk about some specific strategies that I implement to reduce and eliminate screen time because I think that it is addicting and because um, since most of these screen times are, con you know, things are connected to the internet, that they're dangerous. Um, there's too many predators out there, you know. Okay, so so because it it's an it's an addiction, I have seen it um, affect mood in my kids and other kids too. It, it it it's a replacement for socialization with actual humans. <laughs> there's just anyways, just a lot of bad things associated with it. I just heard, um, a, a, I swear it was just this morning or yesterday, um, somebody was talking about the rate of suicide. I think just, I think it was like just, I forget how, what amount of time maybe, but it maybe it was like, if with one hour screen time a day, the rate of suicidality among um, minors went up a certain percent. With like four hours went up like 70 something percent. It was crazy, and then they like, and then they said, "Do you know what the average kid, I'm assuming in America, is spending on screens? It's like nine and a half hours a day, which like blew my mind. Blew my mind. We, I grew up in an era where we had TV, but like I said, we didn't have. I never spent nine and a half hours watching TV because you couldn't carry your TV around with you everywhere you went, right? So when I went out in the car." I had to look out the window and we would like sing a lot of songs in the car. I couldn't read in the car because I always got car sick, but there was a lot of singing in the car. There was those games where you're like looking for stuff. Uh, there was slug bug, you know, and Popeye. Do you guys play Popeye? <laughs> Punch the ceiling when you see a one headlight car. And there was just a lot of talking and interacting. So that just blew my mind. And I don't know where they didn't cite their source. They, they were, they were, but that's what they were saying. Anyway, so since I think of it as an addiction, it's also sometimes just like a habit too. Um, like I have a habit of getting up in the morning and then like waking up and like grabbing my phone and scrolling first thing in the morning. Like that's a habit of mine, and it would take conscious effort for me to be like no, I'm not going to do that, you know? And with any type of habit or addiction, I think we've all been taught to avoid our triggers. So what are our triggers? So like I remember, don't tell my kids. I haven't told them yet. I'll tell them someday. I used to, I used to smoke the cigarettes and back in the olden days. <laughs> and I remember when I wanted to quit, the really big trigger for me is because I like to just smoke on my way to work in the morning. I'd like to get up, I'd get like a frappuccino, I might stop at Dairy Mart, get a frappuccino like every morning, 
and smoke a cigarette <laughs> so I could blow it out the window, you know, <laughs> and drink coffee. Just get all jittery. <laughs> That was like such an ingrained habit and like so getting in the car was such a trigger for me when I'd get in the car I would I would immediately be looking for a cigarette so to since I couldn't avoid the car I had to like drive places I, I did some things to try to break that habit so one thing is I, I went and I like deep clean deep cleaned my car to try to get like any smell out of my car and so then I wouldn't want to get my car stinky again and then I worked really hard and then um I had just tons I ate so many Mentos I remember I ate so many Mentos because you want to have your mouth doing something because it's part of that habit and gum so much Mentos and gum so I like that's like part of replacing the habit I was replacing it I couldn't avoid the trigger but I could replace what I was doing instead so one strategy for screen time if there is just a trigger or like a habit right of when that screen time is happening try to swap it for something else take that away but give something else that would sort of meet that need so a lot of times I think kids are looking at screens because it, it's they're they're bored or they just are like that's just what they do for fun and so when they're done with their schoolwork or whatever they want to go scroll their screen and then they're, but the more they do it, the more they're getting addicted to it. Do you know what I mean? I remember reading, this is things back when I was trying to quit smoking, but like I was trying to do research on how to quit smoking and it's been a long time ago, but like they said, like the reason why the, what's that? Like when you taper down, when like you do, let's say you're smoking five cigarettes a day and then they say go to four, go to three. Why the reason why that doesn't work very well is because every time you smoke and you're getting that addictive, you know, you're getting exposed to that nicotine or whatever, your brain continues to create um, connections and like pathways in your brain that that's your habit, that's what you do. Like you're getting, no matter, even if you're doing it less, every time you do it, you're getting more addicted, right? Same with like sugar. You may cut sugar down, but every time you consume sugar and you get that big dopamine, you know, um, drip <laughs> to your brain, you're actually just strengthening the addiction even if you're doing it less so that's why people say go cold turkey on stuff again like i'm not an addiction expert or anything <laughs> i'm just explaining my experiences and like how i'm applying it now to screen time like my thought process and how i'm applying it to screen time if you have something helpful to say about breaking addictions or habits please leave in the comments because like that's what we're, I'm here for. I'm here to share what I think is helpful and I would love to hear what you think is helpful too. So the goal w with me and the kids and screen time, because we, we had to deal with this because I remember my first concern with screen time, I remember when I had my first child, was there was all this stuff about screens, there's too much like changing, like cartoons like change the um, image all the time, it's so bright and it would give kids like ADD. And I remember asking our family doctor about it, and he said, no, there's no, nothing to show that. Of course, that's, this has been 12 years ago, you know, but it, that they just say not to have screen time because they're worried about childhood obesity from being, like, inactive. And, you know, when people like to eat while they're looking at, you know, at a screen or something. And so I don't know if that's, that may have been kind of like debunked that worry I don't know I haven't heard about that a lot lately so anyways I so I did allow I, I thought well as long as it's like educational stuff like I remember I got him a leap pad because I thought it wasn't as bright and it didn't change all the time like a cartoon and so I thought there's all oh, there's like a little educational games on there or whatever you know and then I watched I remember I chose really like calm like I remember I let him watch Kipper the dog and there was this other one called Little Bear uh, cartoons because they were just really they were not hyperactive and they, they just like follow they weren't overstimulating right they were pleasant but not like overstimulating and so I thought that that was me doing the right thing but looking back I think I was just I was still giving them screens setting up those habits of screen watching like that's what you do for pleasure you know or a reward now like they think whenever they, you know, or when they were sick, they could watch something. Which, looking back, that was not a thing. When I was sick, my mom did not 
like bring me a TV into my room or whatever. I just had to stay in my room, be quarantined, and I had a bunch of books <laughs> in there and like drawing stuff. I'd stay in bed and like draw or read, and it was kind of boring. <laughs> But I wasn't getting addicted to screen. I wasn't getting addicted to anything bad, you know. So I digress. Kind of doing that same thing, though. Like, the more I was giving it to them, they were creating that connection that now, you know, when I don't feel well or if I'm in pain um, or if it's learning, then I can have screens. And I was just strengthening. I was making that habit in them. I was making that addiction in them even though I thought I was just being moderate, you know, and it was, so that was fine, which maybe it is, maybe it is. Um, but if you want to get rid of the screens, this is what we've done. And I'm not gonna say we're not completely screen free. Like I do just disclaimer, we do watch a family movie night on like Friday nights. Uh, we pick it out together. We do allow them to do 30 minutes of game time. Um, on Saturday mornings if they've you know done all their schoolwork and all their chores all week but I mean it's 30 minutes I'm pretty strict about it although I have to say like I can't control what happens when they go to other people's houses there's only only one of their household the kids go to right now and I've told them that you know they're only allowed 30 minutes maximum for the whole week so if they use it at their friend's house like I need to know because um, they're not going to get it. <laughs> they're not going to double it up. Okay, so the strategies for removing the screen time, these are my best strategies. First, I have, over here a long time ago, it actually was in the context of doctors. Like, people are really bad, I guess, at following their doctor's instructions. <laughs> but there are some studies that found that if, if the doctors would explain the why to people, that the people were much more likely to follow the instructions. So um, that made sense to me. So I would say it's give it a fair shot. Explain to the kids the why. Um, say, you know, it's um, we know that games and screens are addicting and it's bad for you to be addicted to stuff. And it, it kind of depends on the kid. I like you ever heard the saying like I can explain it to you, but I can't make you understand it. <laughs> like sometimes that's the thing with kids. They just especially when they're young and you're trying to make this change, they may not have the ability to really understand it. And so then you're gonna have to just stand on. Mom and dad knows what's best for you. You know, we, we love you, you know we love you, right? Yeah, we would never do anything that's bad for you. We only wanna do what's good for you. You know that, right? Yeah. So this is a rule, you'll understand it when you're older. I mean, sometimes you just have to stand on your authority as the parent and that they love and trust you. And, and work from there because they won't always understand what habits are or addiction is and moods and so they won't understand what they're losing um, by vegging out on these screens. Okay, let's be honest, a lot of the screens <laughs> are a crutch for us parents, right? So you're gonna have to probably be a more hands-on parent if you are taking away screens. So change your expectations of what parenting is like if you're gonna take away screens. So to avoid triggers, I would say get out of the house more. Now, the conversation I was reading about was around a woman who lives someplace where it's extremely hot in the summer and so you're kind of stuck in the house a lot because you need to be in the air conditioning, which I totally understand. I live in South Carolina it now and I, obviously I'm not from here. If you can hear my voice, I'm not from here. <laughs> oh, P.S. Total side story. I'm from Oregon, and you rarely meet Southerners in Oregon. I think I met besides my grandpa, who's from Alabama, who moved to Oregon only because he met my grandma in the service. They were Marines back in World War II, and she was from Oregon, and that's how he ended up there. Like people from the South do not move <laughs> to Oregon. I think I met one person ever in my life from the South who would move to Oregon. And they say that like people tend to stay in the same climate zone that they're like used to. So I saw a map one time that showed how people immigrate in the US and it's like all just lateral. They stay in the same longitude, right? Because people that grew up in hot areas in like sunny areas do not, they hate the Northwest where it's like 
especially, well, not all of it, but like especially where I was from in the valley where it's like gloomy and overcast and drizzly and it's colder, like they hate it. <laughs> and people from the colder regions hate, we hate the heat and the humidity. Like I hate, I literally dread summer <laughs> now every year, which in Oregon, it was my favorite season because that's why I finally got to get outside and do all the outdoor things I love. Here, I cannot go outside in the summer. It's so hot. It makes you sick and like the mosquitoes eat you alive never <laughs> like alive so anyways another side rant sorry but I thought when I moved here I thought I'd be like interesting because I was like I bet people never move uh, from the hardly from the west coast to the southeast and I was like oh I'll finally be interesting like I'll finally be different and have like a different accent or something and nobody cares <laughs> not interesting nobody asks me where I'm from <laughs> I was like people will ask me where I'm from nope nobody cares and I found that down here this is just total see the anthropologist to me is coming out where I'm like really interested in cultures and people groups and like how like we interact with each other and stuff but the south is so diverse it's so much di more diverse from, than where I come from even within the states like there's people here from there's a ton of people from New York a ton of people from Ohio people in the south move around amongst you know the southeast regions people from Georgia people from North Carolina people from Florida um people from Virginia down here like there's just more mixing here it's really interesting okay enough rambling let's sum it up what we're gonna do to remove screen time we're gonna avoid triggers to do that First thing I would do is say, arrange your schedule in a new way. So change things up a little bit and that'll remove some of the routine um, based triggers. So for example, it is summer. People are trying to avoid some the, the hottest part of the day and stuff, right? So when it's cooler, get up. Instead of doing maybe school first thing in the morning this summer, um, get up and go outside first thing in the morning this is a great time to work in your garden where it's too hot right to do any outside chores have your kids come outside with you we're not getting up and eating cereal and scrolling our devices or watching cartoons or whatever get outside if you exercise if you guys have a little exercise routine do it in the morning do it outside if you can then come in during the hottest part of the day right have the kids help you with more things around the house Number two, okay? Involve them in more real life activities. And I know, because I know personally, it's easier for me to just do it myself, especially when I'm in a hurry and I'm trying to like stay on schedule. Like I'm a very type A, I wanna be efficient. <laughs> I hate wasted effort and energy. It's super annoying to me. <sighs> this is part of this is parent, this is part of the parent parenting stuff that I struggle with, right? Is this like you guys just go um, stay out of my way and just let me do it, right? I like, oh, I have to be like, okay, come in here and like help me. I need your, mom needs your help, <laughs> you know? And like l have them help you make the sandwiches for lunch, right? Let me, we're gonna do this like every day. I wanna, and you're gonna coach them and be there to help them and keep them involved so that you're not in there doing all the work while they go grab an iPad or something or get on a computer or something. Do you know what I mean? Just have them involved in more things. Then clean up, have them involved, always involved in the cleanup process. Like make them too busy and not in like a miserable way, but just like in a pleasant, we've got stuff to do um, way. Turn on music, let them do chores with music on. I don't believe there's any studies that music is bad for us you know people aren't listening to nine hours of classical music a day and like offing themselves you know like make it pleasant and call grandparent it's really important that we stay in touch especially if you're like me that's something we do a lot because we're so far from family is I call my parents a lot and the kids like to take a turn talking to them and keeping in touch and, and just like being um, a modern fam long distance family, you know, 
um, to connect with people, even if it's like phone calls, you know, um, make play dates and go out and meet people at the park. Again, I would do that early in the morning when it's not too hot or in the evening when it's cooled down if the mosquitoes aren't out yet to like eat, flay you alive. <laughs> I really have a grudge <laughs> against the mosquitoes. <laughs> Anyways, so um, then maybe do your schoolwork or if you're gonna do inside stuff, do it during the hottest part of the day, stay inside in the air conditioning, you know, and then Go back outside if you want in water play. If it's, you know, you, you don't want to be at peak sun, but you know, it's still pretty warm out. Go outside, squirt the kids with the hose. My kids are obsessed with putting the sprinkler underneath the trampoline, you know, and then like sometimes I go out there and put some like dish soap on it so it gets all like slippery and they think and soapy and they think that's hilarious. Go to, just go do outside things, try to stay cool and active. Go to the lake, go, you know, take swim lessons this summer. If you can that will make them tired and it'll, it'll get all that activity will give them natural but dopamine you know like and serotonin and it'll be it'll be a natural lift versus this artificial lift you know from the screens and there's you're they're supervised they're with you they're safe right we're minim minimizing risk and then I would say, if they have some other type of trigger, like if they're in the habit of, well, let's say I wanted to replace the game time on Saturday, let's say you're going for no screens, period, right? If I wanted to replace that game time on Saturday morning, I would, the kids look forward to that. I would need to replace it with something else they also look forward to. So that might be, for right for us, with my kids personally, they uh, love fishing. So early mor Saturday morning, if my husband, to take them fishing in the morning, I think that would be like a good replacement. I don't think they would miss the games at all. Um, if you, I know not everybody lives some place where they can easily go fishing. Um, I'm trying to think if you live in the city, like on Saturday, it, but just what other thing does your kid like, you know, that you could, that you were okay with switching out. I mean, you could make that like an outing day like you do something special. I mean, and I'm always trying to think of things that don't cost a lot of money or anything, but like, is there a favorite park or a favorite pool or a favorite friend they like to see on Saturday? Um, or something that my husband has recently started doing with my kids is um, they are working on building a remote control airplane. Of course he works all week, he's extremely busy. So Saturday morning would be a really good time. Like, you know, let everyone sleep in on Saturday, but then they get up and have a nice healthy breakfast and if they want to work on that airplane project like that's exciting and once it's done down Saturdays they can go take it out to the park and go flying on Saturdays so maybe get involved have some kind of like ongoing project that they look forward to working on and that um, there's some kind of payoff for them like some goal that keeps them attracted to that activity those are just some ideas so to recap we're going to number one explain to the kids why the why uh set a rule right this is a rule um set you know it's an expectation they follow the rule change your schedule and replace so explain rules schedule replace i hope that's how i hope that's helpful that's my strategy and like there are going to be struggles there's still definitely going to be struggles you may want to get rid of extra devices we did we had to because kids were sneaking them <laughs> And disobedience is like, I mean, it's a sin problem, you know, and I don't want to set my kids up for it, you know, to make it more, not set them up, but like to make it more, if it's there, it's going to be tempting. I don't want to tempt them, you know, unnecessarily. So we're down to, we have one TV in the house, just one. And I've talked about this a million times. It's in the school room, which is my living room, and I cover it up with a chalkboard all week it's covered up you can't even see it so there, there's not a visual trigger there right and there's no other TVs in the house like I love all this I love screen stuff as much as the next person <laughs> you know so I was like telling my husband the other day I was like oh man like I really want I think I really want one of those like really fancy TVs that looks like a picture frame like a nice one you know and like you can have a, a screen on it and it just looks like a piece of art but then it's actually you can turn it on it's actually a tv 
I was like, I'd really like to have one of those in, my, in our room because, um, you know, sometimes I'm really tired or like, I know I've kind of talked about this before, but I have like pain issues and sometimes I just have to be in bed and just, just to take care of my body. And I was like, I really, I find myself like trying to watch something or listening to things on my phone. And I was like, I really like to have a TV, like with those fancy TVs in there. And I was like, the kids won't even know it's a TV. We won't even tell them. <laughs> No, that this is not gonna work. <laughs> this is, like you can't just, uh, like they say more is caught than taught. Like I have to walk the walk too. Do you know what I mean? So, like I can't be constantly on my screens um, and then expecting my kids to not also be on screens. Do you know what I mean? So um, <clears throat> it's all very tempting. It, it would be more of a tempt. I would I would find myself watching it. This is I'd be on there more and more. I'd find more and more reasons to do my ch like oh I'll bring all the laundry into my room so I could like watch my nice fancy artwork TV. Do you know what I, like, you know what I mean? I would start forming my life around it, and that's what happens with addictions. Like people's lives become formed around the addiction. We want to break that chain. Those are chains we want to break. We don't want those chains on my kids, you know? So you may want to get rid of some of your devices. We had to get rid of, like we had an extra phone. Because back when everyone was in a public school, we got him a phone. I wanted him to have one, especially for on the bus. But he had like downloaded some games on there. And then even though we like would take it away, like he couldn't have it like at home. I just wanted him to have it on the bus and back. He was like finding it and like sneaking it at night and stuff. And then he like wasn't sleeping. I don't like I couldn't figure out why he was so tired. And I finally figured out because he was he knew where like I hid it. I thought I, I thought I didn't know where I put it in the closet or something. I don't know. I'm trying to move it around, but he would like find it and then he'd be up all night on it. And then he'd be like tired. And I'd be like, why is he so tired? Like I was all worried and stuff. Just get rid of your extra devices. We now have one iPad which is my husband's, um, one TV, which is covered all, you know, week, except for family movie night and game time on Saturday morning. And, um, I guess we have, you know, my laptop, which they're not allowed to touch. And I usually take up to my room with me at night because I like to work in bed at night. That's usually when I'm editing these videos is like after the kids are, I'm like usually in there editing in bed just limp we got rid of the leap pad honestly it was like a gateway drug <laughs> the kids are not allowed to have phones if we're gonna get them a phone we're gonna get them a dumb phone you know and yeah so maybe that add that to the list so maybe like eliminate ex you know, eliminate all the devices you can change your schedule get you know replace the habit you know, re replace the activity get outside as much as possible leave the home as much as possible and, and like explain to your kids the why and hope for the best. <laughs> All right, so here's my, wait, let's see what I have so far. I've got the solar year, We've got cut out snowflake instructions, cold play snow. Mm. Rain, rain in a jar. Okay, so I'm gonna see. I need. I think there's a few more I want to make, and a few more just like fallback activities, a strategy I want. Anyways, when I'm done with this, I'm sure I'll do a video on it, show you guys it all. Um, I'll give you the link for it. But um, anyways, I know screen time is something that's on all of our minds, and you can do it. Be consistent. Don't cave. Don't cave. You, you and your spouse. You have a spouse or a co-parent really helps to be on the same page and be united front with this that the kids cannot go around you to the other parent or whatever talk to the grandparents to the babysitter to anybody else involved in their life let them know the rules okay that's also really important to communicate to other people so that it's consistent that's the best I got tell me what tell me your best suggestions and I'll talk to you soon